Good day everyone. So for today, uh, allow me to make a presentation with regards to how businesses use information systems today. So for the objectives of this presentation, uh, we're going to define and describe business processes and their relationship to information systems. Describe the information system supporting the major business functions, sales and marketing, manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, and human resource. So evaluate the role played by systems serving the various levels of management in a business and the relationship to each other. Explain how enterprise applications and intranets promote business process integration and improve organizational performance. And lastly, assess the role of information systems function in a business. All right, so this is to complement our discussion with regards to uh, the new role of the chief information uh, information officer all right the case that we just discussed a while ago so business processes and information systems so information systems are all about improving business processes which lie at the very heart of a business if you remember our previous discussion we talk about uh, operational excellence, okay, or operational efficiency. And uh, information systems is there to improve those business processes. So if we use the manual uh, process, okay, suppose we, are, we can only uh, remember the case of Imara Medical Center. If we can only, say, serve 1,000 uh, patients in a day, but because of information systems and we improve the business process, we uh, might be able to serve, say, 5,000 or even 10,000 uh, patients per day. All right. So the very heart of a business, of course, we have manufacturing and production wherein we produce uh, the product or the service that we're going to provide. Sales and marketing, that is bringing now the product to the market. Finance and accounting, of course, this back office, all right? And human resource, of course, to manage our employees, all right? So how information systems uh, enhances business processes? Simply by increasing the efficiency of an existing process, all right? So means to say, uh, an example, if you go to the bank, all right? So if there is there is no computer system, there is no business information system, then uh, say it will take uh, 20 minutes to serve one, one client, okay? But if we have, say, uh, a business information system, maybe it will take only two to three minutes, okay? So that is now by increasing the efficiency of an existing process, all right? Or it, we can enable an entirely new process that are capable of transforming the business. Uh, by automating many steps in a business process. So remember what we have been discussing uh, the other time, the other day, okay? So we said, you know, how is a business information systems transforming uh, the business enterprise? One of those transformation is the flattening of the organizational structure, okay? Uh, flattening because if we look at the organizational structure, it used to be very hierarchical, okay? So many layers of management. But because of business information systems, we eliminate uh, some of those levels or layers of management, okay? How did we do that? By simply enabling entirely new processes that are capable of transforming the business. And one of those transformations, of course, we flatten the organizational structure, all right? So we automate many steps in a business or we can change the flow of information. In the past, 
maybe it's very sequential. Today, it could be multi, uh, multi-access, multi-tasking, multi-programming. Okay? So, making it possible for many people to access and share information. So, in the past, we can only say one at a time. But today, uh, multi-access. Okay? And then multi-transaction, multi-programming, multi, you know, multi-processing. So, replacing sequential steps with tasks that can be performed simultaneously in parallel. Alright? So, gone are the days wherein you have to do it sequentially. So, you can simultaneously perform these tasks in parallel. And then, eliminating delays in decision making. Right? So, remember, one of the objectives why information systems are being implemented in... Uh, organizations is because managers wanted to uh, make better decisions, all right? And eliminating delays is one of those. So there are many types of business information systems. Let's, let's us first talk about functional business information systems. So with regards to the sales and marketing systems, okay, say order processing, okay? This is for operational management and employees, so when clients order uh, items, products, so our operational managers and employees will be able to process those orders. Okay. For middle management, of course, we have pricing analysis. You will the the middle managers, okay, will be able to analyze your pricing vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, your your competitors. Okay. And then sales trend forecasting for senior management, those at the top, all right? You, they will be able to forecast the trends with regards to sales. Remember when we were talking about Imara Medical Center, this is one of the reports that Dr. Onyango would want to, to, to get from his business information system. But because his old system is unable to do it, then he's not getting this report, all right? Whereas for manufacturing and production information systems, we can have a machine control. This is for operational managers. Why this is important is because, you know, we wanted to, you know, maximize the utilization of this machine. Say we spend, uh, remember for Imara Medical Center, we spend, uh, say, 1 million, uh, uh, maybe 1 million Kenya shillings for a machine. We have to maximize the utilization of that machine. We know exactly uh, when will be the next service of this machine. So we don't want uh, downtimes, okay? We don't want this machine to break down at a time when we needed it the most, all right? So machine control is a very important information system for operational managers. Production planning for middle managers, remember, uh, in our discussion the other time, we talk about uh, underproduction, overproduction, okay, misallocation of resources. Now, uh, a production planning information systems will uh, enable middle managers to, to plan production, all right? Facilities location for senior managers, okay? So, uh, say you're going to build a multi-billion dollar facility, well, uh, it's a very crucial decision that senior managers have to make. And there are many variables to consider, okay? Availability of raw materials, access to the premises, availability of manpower, and so on and so forth, all right? So it's very important that we must have a facilities location information systems. For finance and accounting, uh, accounts receivable and accounts payable. These are for operational managers, okay? So it's very important that we should do, uh, we should attract accounts receivable, those people who owed us money. And of course, accounts payable, those money that we owed to our suppliers, okay? Uh, budget, budgeting for middle managers, okay? So example, uh, each department has its own budget and we have to monitor that budget, okay? And profit planning for senior, man senior management. It is very important that we should be able to plan for profit. So now, uh, do we have to pay dividends to our shareholders? Are we going to use this profit to expand 
these are the kind of questions that uh, profit planning information system should be able to provide senior management. All right. For human resource, we have so many information systems in human resource. One is training and development. Okay. This is for operational managers. It's a very important that we need to monitor the training and development of our people. Why? Because uh, uh, remember, uh, they cannot perform their job. Remember when, uh, in the case of Imara Medical Center, wherein the employees are not uh, computer literate. So therefore, we need to plan for training and development. All right? Compensation analysis. All right? So we need an information system for middle managers to be able to analyze compensation. Why? Because uh, we have to be competitive. Remember, if our compensation is not competitive uh, with regards to other companies in the industry, we might lose key personnel, all right? And then human resources planning, all right, for senior management, of course, uh, we need to plan for succession planning because uh, we cannot afford that when people retire or leave the organization, there is no one who will replace him or her. All right, so it's very important that we need to plan our human resource so that now if we plan for expansion, we have ready available people who can take those positions. All right, so we can also discuss business information systems using the constituency perspective. Okay, so one of those is transaction processing system. Now, what, are the, what is this transaction processing information system? Well, it keeps track the elementary activities and transaction of an organization, just like Imara Medical Center, for example. Sales, we need to keep track of, those, of the sales, okay? Receipts, cash deposits, payroll, credit decisions, and the flow of materials from one say, uh, factories that applicable in Imara Medical Center, maybe from, uh, from one pharmacy to another pharmacy, okay? Or from the storeroom to the laboratory room, something like that, okay? The flow of materials. To answer routine questions, information generally must be is easily available, current, and of course, very important, accurate, okay? They must be accurate. Remember when we were discussing about Imara Medical Center, People are going around the system. So you can never have an accurate information when, when people are going around the system. Why? There are many transactions that were not captured in the system. All right? So it's very important that the information must be easily available, current, and accurate. And then also we have management information systems and decision support systems. These are for middle managers. So middle management needs systems to help with monitoring, controlling, decision making, and administrative activities. Okay. So the principal question addressed by such systems is this. Are things working well? Okay. Are things working well? Do we have enough cash? Do we have the budget? Okay. Uh, do we, uh, how is our accounts receivables and our accounts payables? So that now it can help man middle managers in decision making. All right. MIS provide middle managers with reports on the organization's current performance. Sales. Okay. How is our sales compared to our projected sales? Okay. How, how is our sales this quarter compared to last quarter? All right. And how is our sales this quarter uh, compared to the projected sales, okay? How is our sales for this quarter compared to our sales last year on the same quarter? So these are the kind of reports, okay, that middle managers may want to get from these information systems. And of course, we have decision support systems, support non-routine decision making for middle managers. So... DSS or the decision support systems answer questions as what would be the impact on production schedules if we were to double sales in the month of December? Okay, so what's the impact on production schedules if we are to double sales? So, means to say, are we going to add an additional shift 
okay? Are we going to have overtime? Okay, remember, we have to double the sales in the month of December. So therefore, we have to produce more, okay? So, but we have also to consider our capacity, okay? The capacity of the factory. So what would happen to our return on investment if a factory schedule were delayed for six months? You see, these are the kind of questions decision systems, support systems will be able to give or answer uh, and provide to middle managers. All right, isn't it that very uh, important? Yes, it's very strategic. It's very uh, important for, for decision making. And of course, we have executive support systems. These are for senior management. It will help senior managers make these decisions. So executive support systems will address non-routine decision requiring judgment, evaluation, and insight because there is no agreed on procedure for arriving at a solution. So this ESS, so the executive support system, will provide a generalized computing and communications capacity that can be applied to a changing array of problems. Let's have an example of an executive support system. Okay, So the CEO of Linear Health Products, this is the largest manufacturer of private level vitamins and supplements in the U.S. All right. So this CEO has an ESS that provides on his desktop a minute-to-minute -minute view of the company's performance as measured by what? Working capital, accounts receivable, accounts payable, cash flow, inventory. So if you have this information on your, on your dashboard, okay, or your desktop, of course, if you are the CEO, you should be able to make a decision immediately and accurately, okay? So very timely and, uh, of course, uh, with, with uh, precision and with accuracy. Next, another information system is an enterprise resource planning system. Remember when we were reading and discussing about Imara Medical Center? So the business information system that Dr. Onyango is wanting to implement was actually an enterprise resource planning system. All right, so what is an ERP? It collects data from various key processes, okay? And in manufacturing and production, finance and accounting, sales and marketing, and human resources, and then store that data in a single central data repository. All right? So that now, this makes it possible for information to be shared across the company. So remember, uh, about the kind of information that we should be we should be able to provide, okay? It should be readily available, it should be current, and it should be accurate, okay? So some of the common uh, ERP providers, we have uh, SAP or SAP, we have Oracle, we have JD Edwards, we have Microsoft Navision, and many others, all right? So these are just examples of an ERP. Now, what are the benefits of an ERP? Well, so many. One is speed in communication throughout the company, all right? Make it easier to coordinate daily operations. How? Example, when a customer places an order, the order transaction triggers the warehouse to pick the ordered products and they will schedule now shipment, okay? Number two, the warehouse will, to will tell or inform the factory to replenish whatever is depleted. Okay? And then number three, accounting department is notified to send an invoice to the customer. All right? And number four, a customer service representative will track the progress of that order through every step to inform customers about the status of their orders. You see now, many different departments working together to serve a client, to serve an order, okay? To fulfill an order. And, of course, what's the end result of this integrated, you know, seamless coordination of these daily operations? Of course, we're going to lower our costs. We're going to increase our sales. We're going to serve our customers better. And, of course, now, the bottom line is we're going to increase our profits. All right?
And of course, there are also disadvantages of implementing an ERP. Number one, we can be locked into relationship by contract and manageability with the vendor. Okay, so a contract can hold the company to the vendor until it expires and it can be unprofitable to switch vendors if switching costs are too high. Remember, with regards to Imara Medical Center, if it was successfully implemented, indeed they were successful after three months but uh, they went bankrupt anyway. Okay, remember it took them 30 million Kenya shillings to implement a system. All right. So it will be there very difficult to abandon that system and then shift to another system if you don't like anymore the existing system, all right? Number two, inflexibility. So vendor packages may not fit a company's business model exactly and therefore customization can be very expensive. Exactly also the case for Imara Medical Center, all right? We sometimes we remember there was issue in the case wherein the vendor said we can Kenyanize the the system because it was developed in South Africa. Okay, so customization can be very expensive. All right. Number three, return on investment may take too long to be profitable. Okay, so in some companies, after spending say 20, uh, two billion Kenya shillings. It will take too long to be profitable. And number four, ERP implementations have a risk of project failure. As you have seen in the Imara Medical Center, it was a complete failure. All right? So those are the disadvantages. And uh, in ERP implementation, we have to uh, remember or cognizant of the toy box effect. Okay? What is a toy box effect? Have you played Lego in the past? Okay. Lego. Uh, if you open the box of the Lego, there are so many parts and you can create, recreate, okay? Many communities using the Lego toy box, okay? So the same is true with ERP implementation. The ERP is so rich in terms of functionality, we might be uh, implementing... Uh, Modules of functionalities that we may not uh, need, okay? So be very careful about the toy box effect, okay? So what is the key to, to solve toy box effect? We have to be very clear with our uh, user specifications. We know exactly what we need because the vendor, the software vendor, we, is there to sell uh, the software, all right? So if we are not clear about the modules, the functions, the use, the requirements that we would require, we might be a victim of toy box effect. And then we end up, you know, uh, spending more. Number two, uh, in ERP implementation, we have to ensure integrity because it is critical. Okay? Remember, uh, our system is already integrated. Okay? So, this is the scenario. The information needs to be put into the system or there will be a domino effect. Okay? That's why you remember, by the way, at Imara Medical Center, why are we do, having double invoicing, no invoicing, no, no billing, double billing? It is because of this. Data integrity becomes critical. Okay? Example, a stock is moved from warehouse A to shop floor B. Okay? And the information is not put into the system. Remember in Imara, people are going around the system. So, it is possible that the information is not put into the system, right? So, the system will tell someone to get the material from A. And then, when it is not there, they have to go looking. At the same time, it is telling someone else to put new material in B. But B is full. Because, remember, we remove the stock from A to B. The first person finds the original material in B and logs it into the system. We now have double the quantity in the system again and it doesn't reorder. And so it goes on and everyone is blaming the system. Okay? This is exactly what happened to Imara Medical Center. 
all right people are blaming the system it's because many people you know uh, are going around the system and this is the end result so things have to be done consistently so the system is going to determine how we do things in all locations so it means to say we have standardized our processes we have standardized our operation so even one location special treatment may not be possible anymore without changing the configuration of the system example if the credit if the credit limit is 30 days credit term is 30 days you can no longer give 45 days or 60 days unless <coughs> we change the configuration of the system If consistency can be implemented, there is good potential for cost savings as well as get rid of special treatments and then reduce uh, cost. Okay? Uh, that reduce profit. Okay? Next information system is what we call as a supply chain management system. I think I mentioned this in the past, in the other day. This SCM systems will help businesses manage their relationship with who? With their suppliers, of course. It will provide information to help suppliers, purchasing companies, distributors, and logistics companies share information about what? Orders, production, inventory levels, and delivery of products and services so that they will source produce and deliver goods and services efficiently or smoothly just in time okay remember what we discussed the other day just in time so the supply chain management system will actually enable the company to manage the relationship with the supplier so how do supply chain management system provide value for a business of course the ultimate objective of a supply chain management system is to get right amount of their products from their source to their point of consumption with least amount of time and with the lowest cost. All right? Least amount of time and the lowest cost. Remember, we need to deliver just in time. And remember, we need to provide products with very competitive prices. Okay? So, SCM or supply chain management systems, by the way, could be really very useful to the business. Next is customer relationship management systems or the CRM. All right. So, if you remember in our previous discussion, we talk about customer intimacy. The other side of that is supplier intimacy, okay? So the supply chain management system, okay, uh, SCM, okay, supplier cha supply chain management system will help us develop an intimate relationship with our supplier, whereas customer relationship management system will help us develop intimate relationship with our customers, okay? How? It will help companies manage the relationship with customers by providing what? Information to coordinate all of the business processes that deal with customers in sales, marketing, and service to optimize revenue and customer satisfaction and customer retention. All right? So, so that now we are speaking the same language when we are dealing with the same customer. All right? So once we have service a customer, and then, of course, the marketing and uh, department should be able to, you know, offer uh, more products, okay? That will be, that will make our customer satisfied. And then, of course, if customers are satisfied, then those customers are retained, all right? Another business information system that is very important for a business is what we call as the knowledge management system. Do you know that in the stock market, at Nairobi Securities Exchange, for example, the value of the company's products and services is based not only on its physical resources, 
but also in the intangible knowledge assets, okay? Because knowledge and information is also an asset, okay? Over half the stock market value of companies results from intangible assets, a large part of which is knowledge, okay? So if you talk about Apple computers, for example, all right? Or Safaricom, okay? These companies, the value of the uh, of the stocks is more than half of that is really about intangible assets, okay? Some companies perform better than the others because they have better knowledge about how to create, produce, and deliver products and services. Now, this knowledge is difficult to imitate, okay? Unique and can be leveraged into long-term strategic benefits that's why uh, until now safaricom is one of the most profitable companies in in the region okay it's because of this right? so knowledge management systems will enable uh, organizations to better manage processes for capturing and applying knowledge and expertise okay because these systems collect all relevant knowledge and experience in the company and make it available wherever and whenever it is needed to improve business processes and management decisions. Why do we have to reinvent the wheel when all those information are available? Okay? End of lecture. Alright, so I hope you, you enjoyed my presentation and I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions, I'm ready to answer your questions. All right, but before you can, uh, uh, you will ask questions, I will answer some of your questions. Maybe there is a question that we need to answer here. Okay, so adapting an enterprise application is a key business decision as well as a technology decision. Do you agree? Why or why not? Okay, now who should make the decision? All right, so we will spend maybe uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, answering and discussing these questions. All right, so I'm, I'm ready now to, to answer your questions.